Um, my name's Caroline. I'm a journalist. I've got a two-part question here. Um, does Islam propagate acts of forgiveness? Yes or no? Does Islam propagate acts of forgiveness? To start the question, does Islam propagate acts of forgiveness? Of course, yes. And every chapter, every surah of the glorious Quran begins with the formula, Bismillah rahman rahim In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. So why does it... Yes, sister. Second part of the question. And the second part of the question is why does it yes, permit? No why does Islam permit honor killings? Honor killing? Yes. What do you mean by honor killing? Sister? Honor killing, the right to avenge your brother's blood in the name of Allah. It might be out of context, but I just need to know if this there's an the answer to that this. If I get you mean honor killing means if someone kills any human being to take revenge? Yes. That's what you mean? Yes, because I've read a few books and a lot of the times people have said that they are allowed to kill their brother or to kill somebody else because their brother has been killed by another human being. This was also a good question, that if Islam propagates act of forgiveness, why does it permit honor killing? Yes. Why does it permit? That's a very good question. Sister, if you analyze this mission in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 178, the hat penalty, the punishment of death, on the basis of kisas. And Allah also says in the Quran in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, if anyone kills any other human being, whether it be Muslim or non-Muslim, unless it be for murder or for creating mischief in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. So as a general rule, if any human being kills any other human being, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity, except under two circumstances, unless it is for murder or for creating mischief in the land. Now, there are two exceptions where Islam gives permission where you can kill any other human being. Number one is, if that person has committed murder, which comes in your scope of question, honor killing. Number two is if he is creating fasad, corruption in this land. Again, this is not compulsory. If someone kills someone, it's not compulsory he has to be killed. Islam also says that if the relatives of the person who has been killed, if they take blood money, if they forgive the killer, that person who has killed can be forgiven. But under normal circumstances, if suppose, if he's killed someone and if I want death on that, because for death, again, the punishment is death. Like as it's mentioned earlier in the early scriptures, even in the Bible, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, it keeps on continuing. Here what we realize that suppose I know of a human being who's killing other people, innocent human being. If I don't kill him, he will keep on killing other human beings. So that law is not only in Islam, it's the law of most of the countries, that if homicide is done, if someone has murdered someone in many countries, he should be put to death or there's life imprisonment. Even in Islam, that if he's killed someone, if required, he can be killed. But the relatives of the person even can forgive the person if they want. If they want, they can forgive the murderer. But if they want that he should be put to death, then he'll be put to death. And the second case where a person can be killed is if he's causing corruption in the land. For example, if someone is committing rape, now rape is nothing but causing corruption in the land. So in this case, that person should be put to death. Because the sin is so heinous, it is such a big crime that there is no other punishment but death penalty. And I have asked this to many non-Muslims, that God forbid, if someone rapes your mother, and if you are made the judge, and the rapist is born in front of you, what punishment will you give him? And 100% of the non-Muslims, they told me that we will put him to death. Some went to the extreme of saying we will torture him to death. So why the double standards? You know, in America, which happens to be one of the most advanced countries in the world, according to the FBI statistics, in 1990, every day on average, 1,753 cases of rape took place. According to 1996 statistics, U.S. Department of Justice, every day, 2,713 cases of rape took place. 1990, 1,756. 1996, 2,713. Maybe the Americans got more bold. That means every 32 seconds, one rape is taking place in America. We are here in this auditorium for the past about three hours. Already more than 300 rapes may have taken place in America. <laughs> so Islam has a system of hijab, which I mentioned in my talk. That when a man looks at a woman, he should lower the gaze. The woman should follow the Islamic hijab, which I mentioned earlier. After that, if any man commits rape, he gets capital punishment.
Even the American law says that seven years rigorous imprisonment for a rapist, but most of the time he's let free. So when you ask even a non-Muslim what punishment will you give, 100% said will put him to death. There was one American who was a smart aleck. In America, he told me, Brother Zakir, first I will give him five years rigorous imprisonment. I told him, do you know, according to the Statutes of America, out of those that commit rape, after the imprisonment and after they let free, more than 95% commit rape again. So if you want your daughter and your mother to be raped again, you're most welcome. I don't want that. So he said, if that's the case, in the first time, it's a problem to death. So in such cases, where there's corruption of land like rape, etc., Islam gives permission, death penalty can even be given for that case. Hope that answers the question, sister.